good morning students good morning to all and last day we have studied about the determinants of exchange rates so today also just we will remain about the determinants of exchange rates and we will go to the new concepts how the exchange rates are going to determine so on the basis of some of the factor only the exchange rates are going to determine so what are the factors are there to determining the exchange rate is first one is differentials in inflation the inflation and the exchange rates are inversely related a country with a consistently lower inflation rate exhibits a rising currency's value as its purchasing power increases relative to other currencies normally the inflation rates of one nation is very low what will happen the currency rate also will be increasing because when we have the inflation situations our value of currency is very low so all the nations will come to our nations to make the imports so when we are even when we have the chance to making the exports on more our value of currency is very low so we cannot increase our rate of exchange otherwise we cannot make our value of currency is extend next differentials in interest rates so there is a high degree of correlations between interest rates inflation and the exchange rates so central banks can influence over both inflation and the exchange rates by manipulating interest rates so on the basis of the inflation and the deflation time the central bank will take some of the efforts to rendering the money to the entrepreneurs so the exchange rate will be reduced on the deflation time and the interest rate will be increasing on the inflation time so whenever we have more interest rate so the foreign direct investment will never come to our nation so in the same time the deflation time we will get we will attract more foreign direct investment because the rate of interest rate will be very low next the current account deficit a deficit in the current account implies excess of payments over receipts so the country resorts to borrowing capital from foreign sources to make up the deficit so excess demand for foreign currencies lowers a country's exchange rate whenever we have the deficit current account so our receipts will be increase next public debt the large public debts are driving out foreign investor because it leads to inflation as a result exchange rate will be lower so whenever the governments are taking to make the expenditure to providing the infrastructure facilities the inflation rate will be increase as a result exchange rate will be lower because whenever governments are going to make the more expenditures the inflation automatically will be created but on the basis of the inflation time so our reserve bank of india also will be increasing more rate of interest by thinking of the more rate of interest the foreign direct investment also will be reduced and because of that we will get the lower exchange rate because the value of money may be very lower so even though if you are taking more effort to increasing the export we cannot able to make it and because of that the foreign direct investment also will be decreased described matters so on the basis of public debt also our exchange rate may be have some of the reduced next terms of trade 
A country's terms of trade also determines the exchange rate. If the price of a country's exports rises by a greater rate than that of its imports, its terms of trade will be improved. If the price of a country's export rises by greater rate than of our imports, the terms of trade will be improved. As we studied already, if we have more export, that means we will have more receipts. And because of that, we will get the more exchange rate or the more value of currency. Next to political and economic stability. If a nation's political climate is stable and economic performance is good, its currency value will be appreciated by attracting more foreign capital. Because when we are involving in this international trade, we must have the stability and the good economical situations or the political situations. Because the political situations always will be subjected to changes, but the trade is not like that. So when one of the ruling parties make some of the rules according to the terms of trade, according to the international, international trade or the possibility favorable transfer of trade, it will be good. Suddenly, the political situation is changed and if the economic stability is falling down, so the economic rate will be come down. Next, recessions. The interest rates are low during the recession days. Already we have studied the many basis of trade cycles are there. So one of the trade cycle is recessions. So in this recession period, so the Reserve Bank of India will be increasing the, sorry, decreasing the rate of interest. So because of that, our domestic entrepreneurs may have the possibility to improve our supply of commodities. But in the same time, the foreign investors will never come to our nations to make a investment. But if we have the possibility to increasing the supply of commodities in domestic nations, we will never attract the foreign trade. Next is speculations. If a country's currency value is expected to rise, investors will demand more of that currency in order to make a profit in the near future. Suppose if any of the foreign investors get the prediction to increasing the value of money is going to increase, he will come to our nations to make the investment. So on the basis of the speculative mind, we will get some of the foreign investment. Because of that, we can increase or our money value also may be increased. So by the eight reasons are there to determine the foreign exchange rate. Next, we have studied the foreign direct investment. The foreign direct investment is an important factor in global economy. So, foreign trade and foreign direct investments are closely related. Because without having the foreign direct investment, no nations will come to the foreign trade. And the foreign trade also will never happen without the foreign direct investment. Because all the nations are still not having the self-sufficient to improving the import and the export. So foreign direct investment is helpful to accelerate the economic growth by facilitating essential imports needed for carrying out the development programs like capital goods, technical know-how, raw materials and other inputs and even scarce consumer goods. So, because of the foreign direct investment only, we will get the accelerate the, all the economic growth. So, if you want to increase in the capital goods, we have to depending upon the foreign direct investment. If we get some of the technical know-how, we have to depending upon the foreign direct investment. So, the raw materials and other inputs also we will get from the foreign trade only. 
if you are allowing the foreign direct investment because some of the developed nations will helpful to the lower division countries only if you are allowing the foreign direct investment otherwise they will never giving the foreign direct helpful to increasing our economic development so next we have studied the objectives of foreign direct investment first one is sales expenses so foreign direct investment has to follow some of the objectives first one is the sales expenses if you want to increase our sales or if you want to increase our types of market and the expanding our market we must be allowed the foreign direct investment next acquisition of resources so mostly if you want to increasing our export level we must allow the foreign direct investment otherwise it is not possible next minimization of competitive risks so if you are allowing the foreign direct investment so we can have many industrial sectors and because of that we will never we will get more employment opportunity we will get more market facilities and all the peoples can able to get all the commodities produced by all the countries so normally the competitive with the domestic nations will be reduced okay students then today we will study about the advantages of foreign direct investment so what are the advantages are there in this foreign direct investment mean first increase the investment how the foreign direct investment will be increase the investment the foreign direct investment may helpful to increase the investment level and thereby the income and employment in the host countries so when we are allowing the foreign direct investment they will make the investment on the domestic nations because of that we will get more industrial sectors so whenever the industry the number of industrializations are going to increase on the basis of that increasing the industrial sessions we will get more employment opportunity and the domestic nations investment of the domestic nations also will be increased considerably next transfer to technology so the direct foreign investment may facilitate transfer of technology to the recipient countries now if you are considering our nations may be as a developing nations but even the underdeveloped countries also will have the possibilities to get the more technologies the many of the developed nations can able to transferring their advanced technology to the developing countries and the underdeveloping countries only if you are allowing the foreign direct investment because the foreigners also will be increasing the productivity or the size of production in the host countries and branches countries also so if they allowed the technical only it is possible next we bring revenue to the government the foreign direct investment may also bring revenue to the government of host countries when it taxes profits of foreign firms or gets royalties from concession agreements so whenever one of the nations are going to allowing the foreign direct investment it can able to bring some of the tax policies the different type of the tax policies if one of the nations can allow the foreign investment with the number of tax and the different tax policies so when we are allowing the foreign direct investment the domestic industrializations and the foreign investors also have to pay some of the tax to the host countries so the domestic countries also can get some of the revenue from the tax next expansion and modernization a part of profit from direct foreign investment may be blow back into the expansion modernization or development of related industries so even if you are allowing the foreign direct investment we can have the possibilities to expand and make the modernization into our industrialization in our domestic countries next manage the real revolutions 
சுற்றி மே கைண்டிலிய மேனேஜரியல் ரெவல்யூஷன்ஸ் இன் த ரிசிபி அண்ட் கண்ட்ரீஸ் த்ரூ ப்ரொஃபஷனல் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் அண்டு சோபிஸ்டிகேட்டட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் டெக்னிக்ஸ் ஸோ சம் ஆஃப் த டெவலப்பிங் நேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் அண்டர் டெவலப்பிங் நேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் நாட் ஹேவிங் த பாசிபிலிட்டிஸ் டு இன்க்ரீஸ் ஆர் ஹேவிங் த மேனேஜரியல் ஸ்கில்ஸ் so we can get from the foreign direct investment and the foreign trade next increasing the exports how we can increasing the export from the foreign direct investment means foreign capital may enable the country to increase its exports and reduce imports requirements and thereby case of balance of distribution so whenever if you want to gathering the foreign direct investment so the foreigners only will have only will make the possibilities or chances to increase the export to their neighbor countries and the trading countries sometime the amer for example if, the, if you are allowing the uh, foreign direct investment on the american investors they will make the possibilities to increasing the export on the another one of the countries next break the domestic monopolist so foreign investment also help to increase in the competitions and break the domestic monopolist so already we have studied every nations also have one of the monopolistic powers monopolistic powers means in our nations if any one of the producers can have the power to produce as a monopolistic he only will have the power to fixing their price of their commodities but if you are allowing the foreign direct investment so the foreigners or the foreign investors also will make the industrial and to produce the same commodities with the low price and because of that the domestic monopolist will come to an end because if any of the producers are producing the same type of commodities with low price so all the people will want to get the desire to purchasing that commodity only so automatically the monopolistic the domestic monopolist will come to an end next the more value of output if foreign direct investment adds more value to output in the recipient's country than the return on the capital from foreign investment then the social returns are greater than the private returns on foreign investment so whenever we have the chance to allowing the foreign direct investment we can have the chance to increasing our export so whenever we want whenever we have the chance to increase in the export we have to increasing our output of domestic countries so we will have more output of commodities and if this commodities also have the more demand we will get the more value of output next filling the savings gap by bringing the capital and foreign exchange foreign direct investment may help in filling the savings gap and foreign exchange gap in order to achieve the goal of national economic development so the savings also will be improved whenever we want to allowing the foreign direct investment the exchange gap in order to achieve the goal of national economic development next stimulate the domestic enterprises the foreign investments may stimulate domestic enterprises to invest in ancillary industries in collaborations with foreign enterprises so the domestic enterprises also will be going to stimulated by the foreign direct investment bend because before the arrival of the foreign direct investment the domestic enterprises will be have the less stimulating power to increase in their productions but after the arrival of that foreign direct investment the foreigners the foreign investors will be increasing their production level so after having 
the understand of the foreign direct investment so the domestic enterprises will be increasing their supply of commodity next encourage its entrepreneurs so foreign direct investment flowing into a developing country may also encourage its entrepreneurs to invest in others lower division country the firms in india have started investing in nepal uganda ethiopia and kenya and other lower division countries while they are still borrowing from abroad larger foreign direct investment to india comes from a small countries so the by allowing the foreign direct investment we will get nearby more advantages next disadvantages of foreign direct investment even though if we have more advantages from the foreign direct investment we will have some of the disadvantages also first one is the capital tends to flow the high profit area so the private foreign capital tends to flow to the high profit area rather than to the priority sectors if you are allowing the foreign direct investment or the investors they will never make the investment on the priority sectors they will make the investment only for the area which has more profitable next not appropriate technologies the technologies brought in by the foreign investors may not be appropriate to the consumption needs size of the domestic market resources availability stages of development of the economy etc even if we have the possibility to transferring the technologies from the developed nations these technologies will not be helpful to the our developing nations and some some of the technologies will be having the not appropriate portions only next unfavorable effect the foreign investment sometimes have unfavorable effect on the balance of payment of a country because when the drain of foreign exchange by way of royalty dividend etc is more than the investment made by the foreign concerns so even if you are allowing the foreign direct investment so it is not sufficient to able to or otherwise the equal to foreign exchange rate even if you are allowing the foreign exchange or the foreign the foreign direct investment it will not able to helpful to come our balance of payment as equal next interfere in national politics the foreign capital sometimes interferes in the national politics because if you are allowing the for foreign investors or the foreign direct investment and if they are became the monopolist and if they are make the dominance to make the power of getting the market they will get the interfere they will get the power to interfere in national politics next unethical trade the foreign investors sometimes engage in unfair and unethical trade practice so even if you are allowing the foreign direct investment the foreigners or the foreign investors may produce some of the unethical trade next distract to small and medium scale enterprises so foreign investment in some cases leads to the distraction or weakening of small and medium enterprises if you are allowing the foreign direct investment they will produce any of the commodities and which have already produced in our nations by the small and medium scale entrepreneurs so the foreign direct investment may have the chance to distract the small and medium scale enterprises and the domestic nations next dangerous situations so sometimes the foreign investment can result in the dangerous situation of minimizing or eliminating the competitions and the creation of monopolies or oligopolistic structures if you are allowing the foreign direct investment it will be create some of the dangerous situations by the way of eliminating or minimizing the monopolist or the oligopolist structures next several cost 
So often there are several costs associated with the encouraging foreign investment. If we want to allow in the foreign direct investment, we have to make the expenditures more to attract the foreign direct investment. Because of that, our nations also have to take more effort. More effort means they have to take, uh, they have to make more expenditures to creating their structures. Next, foreign direct investment in India. In the early 1991, the reforms in the economic policy, this helped to open up Indian markets to foreign direct investment. The foreign direct investment in India has increased over the years. In India, foreign direct investment has been advantageous in terms of free flow of capital. So the major sectors benefited from foreign direct investment in India are financial sector. Some of the banking sector only got some of the advantages from the foreign direct investment. Next, insurance and telecommunications and hospitality and tourism and pharmaceuticals and software and information technologies. Wherever they can have the more chance to increasing the profit, that sector only got the foreign direct investment. So we will never get any of the foreign direct investment in our primary sectors. So foreign direct investment is not permitted in the industrial sectors like arms and ammunition, atomic energy, railways, and coal and lignite, and mining and iron. So what are the sectors are undertaken by our domestic nations will never allow the foreign direct investment. Okay students, till these portions we have completed our chapter seventh chapters and if you have any doubt on the seventh chapters please ask me and just you can take the advantages and disadvantages of the foreign direct investment as your study portions thank you